Let's take a look now if I have two means, but if those means are somehow paired, therefore not independent. How are we going to handle that situation? So here's an example for you. Students in an AP Bio class took a pretest and a post-test over mitosis, which is the process of a parent cell dividing into daughter cells. And below are the scores for eight randomly selected students. So we can see that Sean did better on his post-test, so did Bill, Anne did not, Ted did better, Sue did not, Phil did better, Maya did better, Sam did better. So hopefully, obviously as a teacher, you want people who take a pretest to not do as well as they did on the post-test or for them to do better here because they hopefully have learned something. But the problem here is the tests are not independent because this is Sean's pre and post test scores and those two scores are not independent of one another because Sean took both tests and Bill took both of these tests and Ann took both of these tests and so they're not independent, they are related. Now that doesn't mean we can't run a test, it just means our test has to be different because if I started checking conditions for this and I checked the independence condition, I would say, oh, this failed and therefore I can't run a two sample t-test but I can run a different test. So what I look for is when I have observations that are not independent or that they are paired, we have to use something called a paired t-test. And a paired t-test essentially looks instead at this whole data set and this whole data set looks at differences, pairwise differences. So the differences of each of these people. Now before I show you what that looks like, there are two different kinds of paired tests, and it's actually the same test, we just call it something different to help people to know if it was an observational study or an experiment. So if I'm just observing to see if there's a difference, it's called a matched pairs T test or interval. Matched because it's an observational study. It's blocked pairs T test or interval if I have an experiment so remember when we made our experimental trees and we put things like lemons into blocks, that's why it's called a blocked pairs because we're having some treatment that was applied between the pre and post results. So if I were going to do this by hand, which I'm not going to have you do, it would look exactly like a one sample T test from a couple of weeks ago. And here's why. What we would do is we would take and again, they would tell us the, the order in which to go. They would say the mean of differences is going to be post minus pre. And so I would take 74 minus 58 to get 16 and 73 minus 64 to get 9. And I would continue that knowing that it's okay that some of the people did not do better and so I got a couple of negative results. But overall, the ones that I have circled here those are the only data points that I care about. So I'm not going to look at pre and I'm not going to look at post. I'm only going to look at those differences. So our hypotheses will be written either as that the mean of differences is equal to zero or that the mean of differences is greater than, less than, or not equal to zero. But again, notice we're not going to put um, mean of one minus mean of the other, we're just going to say the mean of differences. Again, somewhere in the question, it will tell you that the mean of differences is whatever order they want you to subtract in. My conditions and assumptions, paired data, they cannot be independent, so they have to be paired to use this test. Independence, the differences must be independent, so Sean's differences versus Maya's differences, etc., must be different. The randomization condition, again, this helps us with independence. Both sets should be randomly selected. Uh, I'm sorry, each person or item should be randomly selected. And then nearly normal. Again, if you have a large sample, it's less important, but it, otherwise you should be checking your QQ plots or your histograms. So let's take a look at this question together. And I want to use an alpha level of 0.025 and I'm going to create a 95% interval. So I'm going to do a test and I'm going to do an interval. And for my hypotheses, I said let, and again, this would be given in the question, let mean of differences equal post minus pre. So I'm assuming that my mean of differences is zero. The average difference in test scores is zero. 
the question says determine if students increased mastery after the unit um, after basically learning the unit so again I have to look very closely at this to determine if I would be expecting greater than zero or less than zero if I took post minus pre remember I'm expecting this one to be larger and therefore I would assume that the differences are greater than zero because I'm assuming their test scores increased and again I then wrote that in words my conditions paired the scores are paired as it's the same student before and after independence the difference in scores per student are independent randomization students were selected randomly and nearly normal the normal probability plot looks fairly straight um, I'll show you on the next slide when we actually do um, the work together in StatCrunch um, therefore the conditions are met we'll use a student's T model to perform a blocked pairs T test blocked because we're dealing with um, paired data and it was an experiment the experiment is that I taught you something before and after so now let's take a look at this test and interval in StatCrunch so I'm going to go to stat and T stats and paired because it's a before and after I'm going to choose the order in which they tell me to so it says take post minus pre so I'm taking post test first pre test second and I'm going to do a test and an interval so let's go ahead and do a 95% interval so click here 95% and that's all I have to do there so I'm going to click compute and that gives me my interval which is 1.948 I also want to do my test so I'm going to go to stat T stats paired I'm again going to choose post minus pre and this time I'm going to choose the mean of differences is equal to zero and then my alternative was that it was greater than zero that those scores increased and so now I have my p-value of 0 0.015 and my interval notice this p-value is low which tells me to reject the null the fact that zero is not in here also tells me to reject the null so my conclusion since the p-value of 0 0.015 is below our alpha of 0 0.025 remember we used 0 0.025 this time we reject the null hypothesis there is evidence to support that on average students scored better on the post test than they did on the pretest I'm 95 percent confident that AP biology students scored an averaged scored an average of between 1.948 and 28.302 points better on their post test than their pretest this supports our conclusion since zero is not in the interval Here's a question for you to try. This has to do with pulse rate. It says 10 men volunteered to test an exercise device advertised on TV by using it three times a week for 20 minutes. The resting pulse rates in beats per minute were measured before the test began and then again after six weeks of basically using the exercise. Is there evidence that this kind of exercise can reduce resting pulse rates? test an appropriate hypothesis then produce a 90% interval and notice they gave me the order in which to subtract so make sure that you choose the correct um, direction based on the fact that I'm taking after minus before and I'm expecting it to reduce so uh, press pause try this entire question and then press play to see how you did so again I'm looking at my conditions data are paired each person's pulse rates are independent of each other uh, they're not randomly selected um, but we're going to proceed anyway nearly normal yes I checked those I didn't have room to put those graphs here but I checked them and they were fairly unimodal and symmetric um, because the conditions are met we'll use a student's T model and a blocked pairs T test and interval and the hypothesis says we're going to take after minus before because they told me to and the first one is just equal to zero as always it says there's no difference between pulse rates before and after the second one I have to make sure I choose the correct direction if I'm taking after minus before and remember I expected these to reduce 
which meant I expected this to be lower. And if I take a lower minus a higher, that's going to be less than zero. So that's why I chose less than zero here. So even though it says reduce, don't just automatically assume it's less than because if they would have switched this around, then even though it would have reduced, I would have had to choose greater than zero. So then I, my um, calculations all done in StatCrunch were basically using the data that I had been given here. Um, and again, that was just in StatCrunch. I chose a 90% interval because they told me to. I chose less than zero because I decided that was the best way to go. I have a small p-value. I have two negatives on my confidence interval, which is nothing to be scared of. But notice the way it's going to change the way that I write my hypothesis. So my low p-value says I reject the null. There's evidence to suggest that the resting pulse rate is decreased after an exercise program. I'm 90% confident that the resting pulse rate of men who participated in the experiment decreased. So that's just where I take care of those negatives. It decreased on average from 1.3 to 4.27 beats per minute. We cannot extrapolate because our data wasn't random. What does that mean? It means I can only look at this group of people who were involved in this. The data wasn't random, so I can't say this works for everybody.